Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're studying the Ten Commandments. I've said numerous times, I want to say it again, God set the people free and God brought them to himself. And these are God's rules to keep us free, to keep us alive. So verse 13 of Exodus 20 says, you shall not murder. That's a command. I wonder how many nightly news segments would have to change their programming if people started obeying this, you shall not murder. I wonder how many hundreds of thousands of families between Russia and Ukraine would not be grieving because folks were obeying this commandment, you shall not kill. Uh, I wonder how many people in Sudan or Venezuela or Yemen or name a country, Afghanistan, if people obeyed this command. We, we don't want to live by the commands of Pharaoh who tells us that you must do this to build my kingdom. We, the people of God, want to live by the commands of God, that God alone has life and death in his power. He didn't give that over to us. He is the one who rules that realm of this world, and we ought to obey it. Rudy, I just went on a rant. Why don't you go ahead and give us some thoughts here? Well, in the ancient world, uh, when Israel comes into the land, uh, if you murder, basically you're killed. Right. But if you committed manslaughter or it wasn't premeditated, you still killed and you had to live in a city of refuge. Right. And there were six cities of refuge and they were Levitical cities because Levites were the kind of like the county seat people of, of, of the ancient world. And Jerusalem became the seventh and the new Jerusalem is, eight, is actually the, the eighth. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing that comes from these cities of refuge is if the high priest dies, mm -hmm. everybody from these cities of refuge can go home. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for the cities of refuge is that the redeemer from a family, if you had killed somebody, had the right to kill that person. Yeah. But he couldn't kill you in a redeem, in a city of redemption. These were physical uh, places uh, of which there were six, then there were seven, mm -hmm. and then we know the New Jerusalem is the eighth. And it has a way of showing us how the Messiah dies to save you from death and destruction yeah. because of what the evil one, the evil one, evil one wants to destroy right. and to kill your soul. Right. So Jesus took this commandment in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. And he said, you've heard it said, you shall not kill or murder. But I say to you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister, or everyone who calls his brother or sister a name, or thinks lightly of them, is guilty of God's judgment. Uh, that's one of the first of his commands in in the Sermon on the Mount, you can find that in Matthew chapter 5. And so I can never imagine myself killing somebody. But I think plenty of less than wonderful thoughts about other people. And I've been known to uh, say unkind things about other people. Uh, that I'm glad you all don't have to have a tape playing and <laughs> having them come out. Uh, comment on that, Rudy. Well, for me, it connects to, to my life because my mother had a certain amount of anger. Uh, and I, have ex I, I, I expect that I have exactly the same. Uh -huh. And that's one of the things that got illuminated is that she was doing the best that she could do. Yeah. And, but what, what it, what it, but within that conversation of this blinding anger, I, I know how destructive it was. 
-hmm. and therefore, you know, I've basically been asking God to help me from from being that way my whole adult life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and He has stopped it from getting it outside my body. He hasn't relieved me of the iniquity, <laughs> the inside um, thinking. Yes. Yeah. And that's what Jesus is getting at. Mm -hmm. If you think. If you're angry, because right. this is a thought process. So, when 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 the next time that that happens to every one of us, simply ask, say, Jesus help me. Absolutely, that's so, what I've been yeah, doing. I have a bunch of friends in the recovery world, and AA material talks about resentment as a Cancer. number one. It's a number one offender. And they have some little sayings that I think are great. It says, uh, you know, don't let that person rent space in your head. And, uh, and they talk about getting rid of resentment. It's very helpful to me. I've never had any alcohol or drugs. I've got plenty of other addictions, but I haven't had those. But so dealing with resentments and not letting those take space up in our head and, and have that tape play over and over again Comment. Well, the comment is this: If it killed you once, why do you? Why are you letting it kill you over and oh, over yeah. and over again? And you know, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Right. There's also a command that if you can't forgive, I'm going to forgive you the way that you're not forgiving. Right. You cannot stand the consequences of that. Right. So this is from freedom. A group of people have been set free who are now, this is how to stay free, how to Amen. live free. So I agree with you, Rudy. When, when, I, when I, and I have plenty of times when I'm not happy, and I will say, God, I don't like this person. I know you love them. Would you please love them through me? And there have been times when I have prayed that prayer over and over and over in certain situations. God, I don't love them. I don't like them. If they were in the same zip code, they'd be in trouble. God, you love them. Would you love them through me? And that's a place of freedom. It certainly is. Yeah. And, you know, I, I the battle is always going to be between your ears. You're right. And and to understand that Jesus died for the space between your ears, because ultimately, if He can inhabit that, yeah, everything is going to be much better. Amen. Let's pray on that. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. And thank you for people who are listening to Rudy and me just talk, sitting down there drinking coffee and water and discussing ourselves. And you, Lord, help us to live in your freedom all the way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you all so much for being a part. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.